That's right. Hello everyone, I'm Super Mario Sonic Lover. Uh, it's been a while since we've done a Sonic game, hasn't it? But lo and behold, it's finally time for the Sonic Heroes playthrough. And man, <laughs> I, I've been waiting to do this game for years. Uh, this has been a long time coming and man, I... I what, what can I say? It, it's... It does, it's gonna feel a little bit, a little bit awkward because this is the first time I'm doing a solo RP since, like, New Super Mario Bros. DS. And I need to open up a new file because I, I did a test recording just to make sure everything was fine. Uh, but, yeah, I need to, yeah, I just need to open up a new file so we can watch the glorious opening cutscene. <laughs> um, but yeah, right off the bat, I... I adore the menu music, like this theme specifically. I I love that they brought it back for Jen's um, Jen's uh, HD. I don't know if it's in the the, the 3DS version, but <clears throat> I I adore this menu theme, theme so much. But without further ado, let's do this. Let's start with Team Sonic, and I'll. I'll explain how this playthrough is going to work out, because it's going to be a little bit different compared to, like, the adventure games and whatnot. But, yeah. <clears throat> I believe this is a new Tails uh, voice as well. Yeah, Ryan Drummond is still here. And I really should have brought a drink with me. And, um, yeah, right off the bat, this story, um, is much more simple compared to the adventure games, because, you know, adventure one, you had, like, chaos, like, god of destruction, and, like, station square, like, you saw humans for the first time and all that, and, uh, SA2, you had, the, uh, Shadow, the ultimate life form, you had, like, Gerald Robotnik, like, wanting to, um, enact revenge on humanity and stuff like that. It was like Sonic Heroes, or Team Sonic, uh, just Eggman wants to take over the world. He has a plan to, he has a secret weapon and we have three days to stop him. Go. And the, um, as you can see, can see her Seaside Hill, which is basically Green Hill, um, and Emerald Coast, um, in one, in a sense. Like, you have the Green Hill kind of aesthetic, and it's on, on a seaside, obviously. And, um, it's basically the modern version of Green Hill. And, honestly, in a lot of ways, I actually prefer this to Green Hill. Um, for stars, I really love the music here. And that's gonna be a trend for this game. This is, um, 
probably one of my favorite soundtracks in the series. I would honestly say I prefer this over the adventure games. Although, it's not as... I wouldn't say it's as um, uh, clear-cut as, as um, just... It's, like, so much better. Like, I, I still think... I still think the adventure games have great soundtracks. And if I had to compare... Um, like, this... W Heroes wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily be, like, super high, like, it, it wouldn't be, like, crazy high up on the, on the music tier list compared to, uh, the adventure games. I still hold those soundtracks in high regards too, but if I had to, if I had to pick, I would definitely, um, I would definitely say that Heroes is my preferred, uh, soundtrack out of the three, and, um, I don't know, like, the... I, I just think there's a lot of diversity here. Um, the there isn't really a track I don't like in this game, and they they just sound they just have this sonic vibe, I guess you could say, where they're really upbeat and fun to listen to, um, and they they fit with the environment because you know SA2 had this trend going where. Uh, was it the the stage themes were more designed around the characters, whereas like Knuckles had raps, uh, Rouge was like smooth jazz kind of thing, uh, Sonic was like more hard rock and stuff like that. Um, whereas this game goes back to how SA One tried to do it, where um, it focuses more on the what the actual level. The theme is more in line with what the actual level theme is, if that makes sense. Um, so Seaside Hill, it feels. Um, I, I, I'm bad at explaining music, but, um, if, it, it sounds like what you'd expect a seaside level to sound like, just with a, just a bit faster paced than, like, a normal game, because, you know, Sonic, you, you're faster than, uh, you're gonna be faster than you are gonna be in most games, so, it's more energetic, and, um, I don't know, I, I just think there's a lot of diversity here in the soundtrack, and I really enjoy it personally um but yeah this game is very divisive i find like um there's a there's a group of people that really love this game um and it's actually dark spine sonic's favorite favorite sonic game as far as i'm aware and um while this is no by no means my favorite 3d sonic game or favorite sonic game at all like just in general i do really like this game um it's Honestly, one of my favorite the, the teams the team based gameplay is honestly one of my favorite uh, gameplay styles in the series. Um, I think there's um, there's a lot you can get out of the team gameplay, and switching between the three formations is really quick and satisfying in my opinion. And I don't know, like I there, there are I I can hear like complaints with the whole like too slippery and stuff like that, which is valid, and it is like. Compared to the adventure games, this game does feel a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say, like, easily breakable in comparison, but, um, it feels like you can lose control of your character a lot more than the adventure games, and I will say, like, this game would benefit greatly from a remake or some kind where they fix up the controls and other issues I'll get to eventually, but, uh, I don't know, man, personally, I, I really, I really am a fan of the controls, there's a lot of neat tricks you can do, and, uh, I think the, I think they designed the levels well enough around, like, what the characters can do, and, the, the, the there's, um, whatchamacallit, the controls are very simple to grasp, like, in a general sense. Um, but one thing I do like about this game, and most Sonic games in general, is that you can use that simplicity to your advantage and kind of just abuse the game's mechanics to learn speedrun te uh, techniques and whatnot. Because, um, for example, like, you, there's a, um, a cool trick you can do with the Rocket Excel where if you, um, if you let the Rocket Excel go out, and then, like, quickly go into flying formation, you can, like, 
it's hard to explain, but like if I, I didn't do it right, but like if you do like that, uh, you can uh, skip some areas that you're not supposed to, and like, say you're supposed to fight some like an enemy or something to open a gate to it for a spring, uh, so you can move on. You can use that rocket excel trick to potentially skip do it having to do that and just go into the next area, uh, just and just you know, and just ignore all that. <laughs> and I don't know. I just unintentional or not, I just find tricks like that really satisfying to pull off in Sonic games. And it's part of the reason why I enjoy the series so much, because you can, like, uh, do all, all sorts of kind of cool tricks like that, and just use it to shave off some time, and one thing, it's just one thing I like about Sonic games, where it feels, oh, that was close, uh, it feels like they're very arcade-focused, in the sense that, um, you're not, your goal isn't necessarily to beat the game, it's, your goal is to look cool while doing it, and that's been the case since really the very beginning. Because like the, the first like Sonic One um, was built around how uh, like Mario One, like One One in Mario One, like being being as fast as possible. Um, Sonic One was made in just like it in on a speed speed run mentality, like uh, like like usually Naka speed was trying to speed run through. Uh, the first level in Mario 1 and made that idea into a full game and it evolved into the Sonic series and what whatnot. And while you can argue how well the games do it, uh, on, from a, on a basis, like, you can compare how well a game does, does this, uh, kind of design, but I re- uh, f f but for me though, I really do enjoy a lot of, a lot of Sonic games for having that arcade feel, making you want to get a better score every uh, every time you play it, and just try and become, uh, just, just get better at it, really. That, that's why, like, Sonic games are some of the most replayable for me, uh, because you can just keep replaying it, you can just keep trying to get a better score and learning new tricks and whatnot, and it helps, it's really satisfying in this game's case, specifically, because it feels like there's so many options at your disposal. At, at your disposal, like um, I already mentioned the whole f little flying trick you can do, but there's also just little things like if you spin the control stick while you're doing the thunder shoot, that actually influences the uh, thunder shoot's direction. So you can like just use it, use that to your advantage to kill enemies faster, and stuff like um, what was it? Stuff like uh, the um, this this move. If you spin the control stick so you can make Sonic and Tails uh, and whoever the other characters are for the team you're playing, um, will basically spin back to towards you faster, so you can do another slam dunk move like right away, basically. Whereas if you don't do that, you'll you have to wait a little bit longer. It's not by much, but. Again, it's little speedrun tricks like that that make the game more engaging to play because you're constantly thinking, okay, how do I make this faster? How do I shave off some time and whatnot? And again, I'm not I'm not really a speedrun type of guy. Like I don't really I don't really uh, think about doing stuff like that um, that often in games. But where, but something about this how um, Sonic games play just make them make them really fun to pull off. And just by the nature of how, again, how arcadey they feel. I didn't mean to do that. That's bad. Um, it, it just makes you want to experiment and do stuff like that. Which, I don't know, I just find it fun. Like, you, again, you don't... Well, I know I didn't say this yet. But you don't have to do any of this. But for my money, I just find... It, it just makes the game or the series more engaging in the long run for me. But, you know, that's just how I feel. Uh, I didn't really get to talk more, uh, like, at all about Ocean Palace, but, um, I really love the music track there. It's, um, definitely one of my favourites in the game. Like, the, the, what do you want to call it, the outro? Or, like, the end bit where it really picks up the, uh, the, the melody really picks up. Like, that, that, that is just amazing. Um, but yeah, this is, um, 
a pretty diver well not really diver di divisive this is a pretty new unanimously hated special stage i don't mind these i i i'm kind of in the middle like i don't hate them but i don't really like them that much either I, it is kind of fun, like, how fast you can go, but it also comes at the expense of control, because these control, like, they, these control like crap, I'm not, I'm not, I'm gonna be honest, but if you're quick, y you can just hold B down, and you'll get to the, to the Chaos Emerald in about, like, 10 seconds, you don't, you don't run into any mines. Alright, this, um, yeah, first boss, this is, um, not really a boss to really worry about much at all, like, you just go to the open area and, um, wait for Eggman to do his rotary attack, I guess, if he's ever gonna do it, or not, alright. Yeah, he's meant to, he's meant to, um, like, uh, stop moving and then go and then do his like rotary attack thing where he just spins around in place and like shoots like bullets around and stuff You should do it here. I Don't know why he's been so like finicky today Come on All right, so so Yeah, I don't- I don't understand. Like, sometimes he just doesn't want to do it. Alright, come on. There we go. Okay, so the fastest way to do this is to, uh, do the trick I was talking about earlier, where you spin the control stick around, and, uh, just get as many slam dunks in as possible, because this is the- this is how you get the most damage in. Like, fast. Uh, you can just, uh, spam the, um... Dang it. This is actually a terrible run. <laughs> you can just do uh, spam the uh, Knuckles' uh, uh, combo move in the, on the ground, but it's not as fast. Well, it, it, it would have been faster in this run's case, because this is actually horrible. <laughs> Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, that was that was bad. <laughs> <sighs> there is also another trick I know. It's not necessarily a speedrun trick per se, but um if you Thunder shoot with a flying formation, and then switch, and then switch formations at the exact same time. You'll basically switch formations uh, before um, and cancel out the f the thunder shoot, but it will still activate that you did it. So it will just do this really awkward animation and acts like you just hit. It will act as a bunch of hits, so you just make the team blast gauge go up really high, really fast. It's um. It's kind of weird to it's kind of weird to like explain um, like how it how it how to do it firsthand, but once you get the hang of it, it really isn't that hard, yeah. and it's uh, very easy to abuse for like bosses and such. So if you need team blast for whatever reason, then there you go. I'll, I'll just do it here. It's like that. It's pretty. It looks weird and it, it might look complicated at first, but it really isn't. But yeah, uh, man, I, <laughs> I don't know, man, I, again, I just love all the speed tricks you can do in this game, like, just, people say, like, that, um, the, uh, the Rocket Excel was useless, and I couldn't be, I couldn't disagree, like, I couldn't disagree less, like, or, or more, I, I don't know, you get what I mean. It's like, because, again, there are so many cool tricks you can do. You can do it, use it to get a good speed boost, and it is very helpful to keep, uh, like, 
to just keep your speed up. And I don't know. I, I don't know. I just, yeah, I just don't agree. And, uh, man, I, they, they replaced it with a regular spin dash in the next game, uh, which we'll probably get to in like a year or something. I don't know. It took us a while to get to this game, so you never know. Um, uh, but like, I, I'm not a fan of the regular spin dash in that game because for one thing, you have to, you have to stop to use it. And, um, most of the time you're just better off just running anyway, and it's just not satisfying to use. Whereas this game, there's a bit of, um, okay, yeah, that's one thing I will say, the light speed dash is a bit, is really one key, one key, yeah, that's a word, one key, uh, because there are times when you think you should be able to be using it, and then you just fall off the cl uh, a cliff and die instead. Uh, that's an issue, and I'm not gonna defend that, because that has happened to me, a lot, <laughs> uh, but what was I saying? Uh, the mm, mm. there's a lot of things to talk about at once when it comes to Sonic, so I'm kind of kind of trying to gather my thoughts at a rapid pace here. But um, yeah, I'm trying to remember what I was talking about. Um, mm, mm, dang it, I I can't think right now. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, Crown Metropolis is a pretty is a pretty cool level. I really love the music here once again, and I like the I don't know. I like I uh, it gives off a futuristic kind of vibe, and that's a motif that I really enjoy. Uh, hence the what reason why the future levels in Crash Free, for instance, are some of my favorite levels in that game. And I don't know. I, it has a nice aesthetic. And again, shortcuts and whatnot. And it's also the first level, I believe, that introduces uh, rail grinding, which becomes much more apparent in the later levels, especially uh, like Rail Canyon and whatnot. Um, Alright, let's just do this carefully. Yeah. Yeah, but like, uh, rail grinding... It's uh, not great, I'll be honest. Um, it's um, it, it's basically a, t a uh, worse version of the grinding from uh, Sonic. So uh, um, was it a a a a Sonic Adventure Two? Uh, because in Adventure Two, yeah, you could it, it could mess up occasionally, but it was so flexible and fun to use to compensate. And again, uh, if it got remade, um, and it, ha it was like flexible and was stable. That would be the best of both worlds, but uh, we don't have an SA2 remake, unfortunately, as of this recording. Um, that always looks really weird, by the way. <laughs> um, but like, if, if we had if we had like SA2 grinding and it was stable like the recent games, that would be great. Uh, but with this game, it's unst it's even more unstable than uh, I keep wanting to say Sonic 2 for some reason. Um, it, it's more. It's even less stable than Sonic Adventure 2, and it's a lot less flexible. You, you can't do as much with it, you can't do those cool tricks uh, or anything like that, and you could you can't, say for instance, like, home an attack on a rail, and then jump off at the, at, at the top of it to get to a secret path or whatnot. That's gone. That, that's not here, as far as I'm aware, and... Um, I don't hate the rail grinding necessarily, but it is definitely a downgrade from the last game, and it's definitely not as fun to use as it was before. So I'll be honest there, like it's uh, it's that that's not as fun. Uh, but uh, I don't. It never really bothered me that much in the grand scheme of things. Like it, it, it definitely is janky. I'll, I'll admit to that, and there are times when I have flown off the edge because the rail switching just didn't work for some reason, like. That that's gonna that's probably gonna happen to you at some point, um, and you've got to be uh, wary of that. But I don't know. It, it's it's definitely worse, like I said. But it's it, it it's uh, not the worst thing. It's uh, I to me it's harmless, uh, honestly. Um, and uh, the, the, there's one thing that's like significantly worse than that, which is right after this. Uh, Zone, if you will, because uh, Sonic Heroes kind of goes in zones. Um, there's uh, two levels 
that have a basically follow the same motif um and then you go to a boss so yeah they're tr trying to be more more in line with the classics uh like it doesn't even like the it doesn't even just go, uh, start um stop with the fact that the class the um was it seaside hill was like green hill is like is like a modern take on green hill it doesn't even stop there like there's Again, there's the two, there's the two acts and then the boss. There's um, special stages, and the second act has the Chaos Emerald, um, and the fact that the story is really simple. Um, you know, it, it's it's trying trying to harken back to the classics where it was a very simple premise. You kind of just went from level to level, and the 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 level things were just whatever the hell they wanted it to be. Because I've heard that. Um, SA2 specifically, they were kind of forced to keep the level themes uh, centered around the story and what was going on at the time. They couldn't really go too crazy with it. Whereas this game, uh, again, you're just going from level to level, and they they're free to just do whatever the hell they want, really. And I think that give, I feel like that gives them more creativity and just kind of just go wild because I really do like the levels in this game. Especially um, the ones in the second half, if you will. Um, but, you know. I guess it, it also, also um, just different... Um, what was it? Ju different de 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 um, design philosophies for different games, I suppose. Um, and what you prefer is up to you, I guess. And I will say... Um, I'll, I'll say this right now, uh, this team, the team gate based gameplay, it's one of my favorite play styles in the series. At the same time though, I would still rather play SA2, um, as a package. Um, maybe not SA1, I, I'd have to think about that. Uh, but the reason, the reason for that is because my, the biggest issue I have, and a lot, well, a lot, a lot of people have about this game, is that you have to play the game essentially four times, and uh, it doesn't really change that much. Um, you essentially what happens is that Team Sonic is the normal mode that we're playing right now, and um, uh, Team Dark is hard mode, Team Rose is easy mode, and Team Team Chaotix Chaotix is uh, mission based, and that doesn't sound too bad on paper. At the same time, but um, you also go through the same levels in the same order for each character. Um, the level design doesn't really change that much, minus like a few tweaks. Like having more enemies is slightly longer or shorter, or you're going for specific MacGuffins or whatever uh, for Team Cha Chaotix. And um, yeah, it doesn't really change that much. And again, you're essentially having to play the same game four times. And that is my biggest complaint with this game, because while I can, it is really enjoyable to just go through one story, um, try to go through all four in like a marathon setting, or like just going through them all in a row, is, um, it kind of gets exhausting, because you're not really doing much different. Um, so what I tend to do is take like week to month breaks between team playthroughs, so I don't get fatigued. Um, and I think honestly that's the best way to go about it, go about it. Don't play this game all in a, in one go because it is it it will it will just exhaust. It will just tire you out like no one's business. So I like I would recommend breaks after every team. Um, but yeah, if if they were to make a remake, um, well not I I don't know if you you'd have to change a lot if you remake this game and fix that. But if you make a Heroes two. Make it so every team goes to unique levels or something, uh, or at least, at the very least, change the level, um, what levels you go to in what order or something. Change something so it's not the exact same story, like, the exact same thing, you know? Um, but, you know, uh, we'll know, we'll, uh, we'll see if we ever get a Heroes 2 or a remake or anything, because I've heard that Takashi Azuka has... D uh, just 
de declared interest in re returning to this playstyle. And again, I love this playstyle, so I'd be down for that, but I have no idea how likely that's going to be. Especially how... Well, I mean, right now, um, they're, they're, they're interested in remaking S SA1, and if they actually do that, I I think that would uh, uh, put them... I, I think it would be a good idea, because um, it'll, show, it'll show them the reason why uh, we want the, uh, the adventure playstyle back. It'll give them some experience if they ever decide to make a new game with that playstyle. Like, I'm not necessarily asking for Adventure 3, and for those who say, Oh, 06 is Adventure 3, you already have one. Like, that's not exactly what I'm getting at here. Um, the, um... When we want- when we say we want the Adventure game, the Adventure style back, we aren't necessarily saying, like, Adventure 3 specifically. Well, as far as I understand, anyway. We just- we just want, like, the- that playstyle back. Like, the, the way people say, like, 06 is Adventure 3 makes it sound like they're saying, Oh, you already have an SA3. You never need that playstyle again. Like, that that's what it sounds like to me when people counter-argue when people want the Adventure games back. Not the Adventure... Well, the, the Adventure playstyle back. And I just find that really short-sighted and uh, silly because it's there's a lot more to it than just one game. Like, th there's a lot you can do with the Adventure style. And, I don't know. I think an SA1 remake would benefit them greatly, just put them in the right direction, especially after the, the mess that was Sonic Forces, um, and, uh, yeah, I, I have some choice words to say about that game, but that's not going to be for a long time, um, but, yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know, man, like, again, the, the Sonic games go by so fast that it's hard to keep track of your commentary, and we're kind of, I'm kind of, like, just, Speeding through everything. Like, I'm trying to keep up with the game. Uh, but... Yeah, there's a... Power Plant is a really fun level. It's a... Th it's where the game starts to get a bit more difficult. Not crazy much so, but... It does start becoming... Um... It... it this is where the game starts to demand a little bit more from you. And, um... Yeah, I don't know. I, I think... I, I do like I, I do enjoy this game. I think it has a good steep I think it has a good difficulty curve. Um And I I, I just I don't know, I find level design in this game enga engaging. So I don't know, what can I say? <laughs> oh yes, also um emblems are back there. Um they don't unlock uh, very many things uh, compared to the adventure games. What, what did they unlock in the adventure games, really? Um, I know in SA1, if you got all of them, you got Metal, so Metal Sonic. But after than that, I don't remember them doing anything. Um, yeah, like I said, you should just hold B, you'll win. <laughs> um, but SA2, I think if you got all the missions cleared for a character, you got... Was it you? You either got a costume in the bounty player, or in the or a new cart uh, in the cart racing game. Either or, but I don't know. I I forget what else they did. But in this game, they unlock two-player battle mode stuff. So yeah, if you're into that, then you're gonna have to get those emblems. And I believe this is the last game that has emblems. Yeah, so uh, these levels are... These these bosses, rather, are just... Really jank. Like, they, they don't feel right at all. So, and, um... I just kind of do this. Until they die. Are they done? Oh, hi. Okay. Come on, just die. I don't usually take this long in this. Where are you? Seriously, just die.
This is taking way too long. Come on. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> I'm having a bad time with these bosses for some reason. They're not even hard. That's the thing. I don't know. I mean, that that is kind of RNG based in a sense because sometimes they just won't die. 